our sales for the first 48 hours were 1.8 million. This was record breaking. We have never seen anything like it. It was amazing. And I'm, I'm not sure I'll ever see anything like it again. Hi guys, it's Ty and welcome back to my channel. So you're probably wondering why is this girl dressed like this and why does she look like an extra from Harry Potter? And I'm kind of wondering that myself. But I'm dressed like this because I absolutely love Harry Potter. I don't really talk about it that much on my channel. But the reason why I'm going to talk about it today is because I've had this conversation with one of my friends here recently. And we were kind of talking about how we don't have a lot of really big fandoms as far as like book to movie adaptations anymore. There's kind of like book to TV show adaptations, but not really book to movie or like book series to movie adaptations like Harry Potter. And when I mean like Harry Potter, I mean when Harry Potter was coming out, the books and the movies were coming out at the same time. And it has not been anything as big as Harry Potter in a long time. And I miss that. I miss, you know, people crowding at the bookstores on release day trying to get these books. And then, you know, a year or two later, crowding at the movies, talking about the books, waiting for the movie to start, being excited about watching the movie all together and just being excited about this stuff. We don't really see that anymore. Yes, you know, we are getting these adaptations, you know, with the TV shows, but it, it doesn't feel the same like we did for Harry Potter. And I think if you know and you have experienced that Harry Potter fandom, I think you kind of understand what I'm talking about. So there's some other ones that I want to mention as well. So I have been a part of the Harry Potter fandom. I have been a part of like the Twilight fandom. I have also been a part of the Fifty Shades of Grey fandom. Yes, I was a part of that as well. There's going to be some other ones that I mentioned, but those are going to be the, the three that I'm going to touch on the most. And then there's going to be some other things that I'm going to touch on and talk about as well and why I think we don't have anything as big as the Harry Potter, you know, fandom that we had back in the day and why I just miss that so much. So I'm going to go ahead and just jump into Harry Potter. So if you are a reader, I think Harry Potter has been a part of all of our lives. I think, you know, there are a few of us who have probably never read Harry Potter and that's fine, but I think a majority of us have read Harry Potter and I think that Harry Potter has been a big part of our lives. I know it has been a big part of my life and it has is probably one of the bigger series that has jump started me into reading. And so when I started reading Harry Potter, at the same time that those books were coming out, the movies was coming out. To this day, it is probably one of my favorite book to movie adaptations. When I was reading those books, I could visually see Harry, Ron, Hermione in my mind. And when I saw that first movie, The Sorcerer's Stone, those characters were exactly what I pictured. They got it right. I have never read a book and they got it right as much as they did with Harry Potter. I will have to say that these producers, directors, they set the bar really high <laughs> for what I expected. Anytime I read a book and it was going to be adapted into a movie, I expected my characters, my settings to match exactly to what I pictured from a book based off of how they did this Harry Potter series. But what I just remember from, you know, reading Harry Potter, and going out and getting the books, I just remember people being so excited and those books being announced and people going out and rushing to go get those books and, you know, people trying to go to the bookstores and making sure they're getting them on release day and their bookstores like selling out. And then once they, you know, started making them into films and how fast, you know, tickets to the movies were selling out and just how they were coming out books and movies at the same time. And just like the excitement around all of that, it was amazing. It was just the best time 
to be alive. Harry Potter started coming out in like 1997. It was when the fourth book came out is when they started making the movie. So at the time the fourth book came out in 2001, then I think sometime that same year that first movie came out. So that was when we started getting the book and the movies at the same time. And out of all the series and everything that I'm going to mention, this is going to be the only one where the books and the movies came out at the exact same time. And even though the movies were coming out in the middle of the series, so in the middle of the books being published, it didn't take away from the excitement of the movies coming out. And also during the time that Harry Potter was coming out, I was getting a little bit older and I also had my first job during this time. And my first job was working at a movie theater. Go figure. And this was the first time that I had even known that like midnight showings were a thing and I had to work a midnight showing. So my first time ever knowing that these were a thing and my first time ever working a midnight showing and one of the Harry Potter movies was coming out. And so when I got there, this was the first time I had ever known that people dressed up for these type of things. And so I was amazed that I saw people dressed just like me to go see these movies. And I thought it was so strange. And I was like, oh, people are dressed up to go see these movies? That's so weird. Go figure. I cannot believe people do this. But now that I'm older and looking back on it, it's so fun. And I probably would have went to the movies dressed just like this because it just brings people together. You're able to talk to people who are just a fanatic, just like you. And it's just exciting. And it just makes you even more excited for either the next book or the next movie that's going to come out. And it makes you want to be around people who are interested in the same things that you are. Because unfortunately, when you're just reading a book, reading is a solo hobby. And so when you're reading, and then you have these movies that are coming out at the same time. You're able to talk to people and you're meeting people who have also read these things as well. You're able to engage with other people who have the same interest as you. It just made everything, it just made everything so much more fun. So after Harry Potter had died down and I was probably in college at this time. So I had missed a couple of other big, big series that had came out and were made into movies. I'll mention those here in a second. But the next thing that I was really into was Twilight. And I did not even get interested in into Twilight until New Moon. So when Twilight came out, I had heard some people at my job um, talking about Twilight. And when they were talking about it and they were talking about vampires and I was like, that doesn't sound interesting at all. I don't think that I would ever see that. So I ended up <laughs> renting the movie from a red box. I don't know if red boxes are everywhere, but they like place them at drugstores. You can just swipe your credit card and it'll give you a DVD, like a walk up rental, um, DVD rental concoction thing <laughs> I don't even think they do those anymore I'm not sure but I ended up watching Twilight I thought it was fine then all of a sudden the same people at work started talking about New Moon and I was like what is New Moon there was like it's a sequel to Twilight and I was like okay so I ended up finding a free version of Twilight online probably shouldn't do that. I'm not promoting people do that, but that's what I did. And so then I was watching Twilight, or not Twilight, but I was watching New Moon and I saw Jacob. And I was like, hmm, this is what New Moon is. This is what this is expanding out to. This is what we about to get. All of a sudden, after I watched New Moon, I was hooked. All of a sudden, I went out, I bought all the books, I read everything. I was a fan girl for Twilight. After I read all of those books, I started down this rabbit hole and I did not realize the fandom for Twilight. It was Team Edward, it was Team Jacob. These people were promoting these movies like it was nobody's business. These people were doing so many interviews. They were 
everywhere. It was Team Jacob, Team Edward, everywhere. Now me, I was doing my own promotion. I was telling my mom, my sister, my grandma, my friends, everybody. I I should have gotten paid because I was telling everybody about these movies. I got my whole family to watch this stuff. I was, everybody in my family was Team Jacob. We didn't care about Team Edward. We weren't worried about those vampires. We were for the wolves, okay? So I got everybody to watch these movies. And the thing about this was by the time these movies came out, the books were already done. So the books came out between 2005 and 2008, and then the movies came out between 2008 and 2012. So the books were done and over with, and everybody was already about the movies. So when we went to the movies to go see this, this was an experience. So I technically didn't really start to like get into the fandom at the movies until the last two. So Breaking Dawn part one and Breaking Dawn part two. The craze at the movies was insane. So at that time, when you went to the movies, you had to get there early. There wasn't like this weird assigned seating that they have now. You had to get there early to get your spot so that you could save it for other people if they weren't arriving with you so you can get your snacks and all that. And so um, because these movies were like selling out crazy and because everybody wanted to make sure they got their seats like these lines to those particular theaters where they were showing the movies would be like wrapped around and they had to like block everything off it was insane for twilight i but you know what i loved it because everything was so crazy and amped up it just made you even more excited and for some reason it just made the movies seem like they were even better than they were <laughs> because of just like the attention that these movies were getting and like how much they were selling at the box office and just how crowded and packed and just how much people were talking about them you just wanted to love this stuff right yes but were they that good probably not if i watch this stuff right now i probably wouldn't like them but the fandom was crazy and i ate it I got everybody watching those movies. Like I said, I should have got paid for the promotion that I did for that stuff because I loved it. After Twilight, I'm pretty sure I missed some other stuff in there. And then I fell for Fifty Shades of Grey. Yes, I did. I know a lot of people don't like Fifty Shades of Grey. I know everyone says it's so toxic. It's not a great representation of like a relationship but listen I, I like those books and again this is one of those situations where the books were already out before we got the movies I think the books came out between 2011 2012 and then the movies came out between 2015 to 2018 but I ate those books up I like the romance between Anna and Christian but the movies, I honestly wasn't like a fan of the movies. I wasn't a fan of the casting for those movies. They didn't really follow the movies like I wanted them to. But the thing about those movies and why I ended up fangirling over those is because it was just a thing for me and my mom to do. Me and her ended up falling in love with the movies and she really ended up liking the movies. And so that was me and her that was that was our thing so we got really excited when those movies came out and we were standing in line with everybody else to go see those movies that was our fandom 50 shades of gray we love them now i didn't go on like a promotion tour with the 50 shades of gray because i didn't know who i would be promoting that too that was just a little weird but i i loved it i love 50 shades of gray i have not read those books since that time i have not seen those movies since that time i actually have not heard anybody talk about 50 shades of gray since that time so that that fandom was like hot when those movies were out but it, it came and it went and people have not talked about that i think that author even tried to have like a a reverse like series where it was told like the book series was told from his perspective and that popped but you know she tried but 
you know, maybe that was more of like a fandom in my mind. <laughs> but I, I like that. I, I was here for it. I think everybody who, I think for that one, people were more a fan of the books and maybe that first movie because everybody was trying to see how it was going to be adapted. But I was here for that one. Now, moving on to the ones that were big that I missed, but I wanted to mention. So the first one that I wanted to bring up was The Hunger Games. I don't know what rock I was under. I don't know how I missed The Hunger Games, but y'all, I missed it. I think I was like deep in college at that point, And I also was not reading at all at this point. So The Hunger Games literally flew under the radar for me. I did not know that this was a thing. But again, this is one of those series where the books had already come out and then the movies came out later, but it was still a really popular series for the books and then a really popular series adaptation for the movies. I had seen the first two movies in theater, but I had a funny story for that first movie because I saw it after I had been in the theaters for a long time. And by the time I went to go see it in theaters, the theater was dang near empty and me and one of my friends went to go see it randomly had not seen a preview for this movie had not even heard of the movie and we went to the movies because we were bored we saw the title of the movie we were like i don't know let's go see that one got into the theater started watching it didn't know what it was about all of a sudden these kids start killing each other traumatized literally <laughs> traumatized but it was such a good movie that when Catching Fire came out had to go see it because I had to go see what the heck was gonna happen next lo and behold they're killing each other again I'm like what is what is happening but I never saw the the end of the series and so I literally just read the books and caught up on the movies within these last couple of years but yeah I totally spaced on even knowing what the Hunger Games was. Same thing for the Divergent series and same thing for the Maze Runner. I did not know what that stuff was until I actually found BookTube a few years ago. Um, again, with both of those, books came out first, movies and adaptations came out later. I don't even think they finished the Divergent series, movie series, because that didn't do well. But for the Divergent, the first movie, same thing. Didn't even know what that was. Me and my sister, bored one day, went to go see the movie. We randomly picked it and turned out we liked the first movie, but I had never seen the other movies. I seen other people talk about it. Doesn't seem like a lot of other people liked it either. So, so kind of abandoned that one. And then The Maze Runner also randomly went to go see that. No, I did not randomly go see that. I saw that Mr. Dylan O'Brien was in that, thought that he was kind of cute, decided to go see that. I thought that the first one was, it was fine, it was okay, but I never finished watching that movie series um, until like years later when I found it on like Hulu or something, and I thought it was fine, but I never read the books for those. Uh, the movies didn't entice me enough to want to go back to read the series. The, the Maze Runner movies, they told me enough. So yeah, so those were some popular series that I can't believe that I missed out on that a, a lot of people seem to really love and enjoy that just flew under the radar for me. So I have a couple of adaptations that I wanted to also mention that I kind of considered like some little one-offs. <laughs> so this first one I want to talk about is the movies actually made the book series popular again. And that one is Lord of the Rings. So I am not a Lord of the Rings fan. I have seen the like bits and pieces of the movies, but the, I think, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but back in the day, like way back in the day, like way back there, the books used to be popular. I'm going to say popular enough for them to make some adaptations for. And those came in like the early 2000s, I believe 2001 to 2003, they made 
three Lord of the Rings movies. And those were very popular. Very popular. They have a lot of fans. Um, the bits and pieces that I saw, they were fine. Like I said, I'm not really a, a huge fan. But they, like I said, they have a lot of fans. And a lot of people, from what I have heard, did not even realize that those were made from books. And those books were actually published back in the 1950s. I think like 1954 to 1955, where those three books were published. And so because those movies were so popular, people went back to read those books. So... I thought that was really interesting when I kind of looked that up. Even though I don't, I'm not like a Lord of the Rings fan. I'm not a Lord of the Rings like fan of the movies. I actually have <laughs> the series because I have seen so many people talk about it. And because I am a fantasy reader and people say that those books inspire a lot of fantasy, I decided to pick those up. So yes, those books are popular, but I think those movies and how popular those movies are inspire people to go back and read the source material. So I just thought that I wanted to bring that up. I also wanted to bring up The Wheel of Time because those books are, have been out for a long time. I think they started in like the 1990s and then they got wrapped up in like 2013. And if you encounter a fantasy reader at some point somebody's gonna say something about the wheel of time whether they read it or not they probably gonna ask you if you read it if you plan to read it or somebody else read it the wheel of time is probably gonna be slipped into the conversation at some point so those books have been so popular and the funny thing is they've just came out with an adaptation I'm surprised that it's probably taken them so long even though I guess technically 2013 is not that that far away since they've you know just wrapped up that series um but yeah that those books have been popular for a long time time it's almost kind of like well if you're a fantasy reader you probably should read these I've never read them I do not plan on reading them I don't plan on watching the show <laughs> I've heard mixed things about it so but for y'all that's out there um it's a popular book series um I can't really say that for the show I, I can't get a good read on whether or not people actually like it or not but there's fans out there. It's a fandom. So just, just know that. Another one that I wanted to bring up, and this one, I saved this one for last because I, I just think this one is just so odd to me. And that is the Game of Thrones. Again, this is not one that I have read. I actually have the books. I just have not made it there yet. And I have not watched the show. But there are lots of fans. It's a huge fandom for the Game of Thrones. Oh my God. And so many people love the books. So many people love the show. The reason why I consider this one a one-off is because I know, I, to this day, I don't understand how it is that we were able to make a show off of a book series that is not complete. Somebody explain that to me. Now I know that the author, George R.R. R. Martin, had a hand in this show. I don't want anybody to come for me. I know, I don't know if he was the one that was able to wrap this show up, <laughs> but I don't understand if he was the one that was able to wrap this show up, how come he can't wrap his series up? I'm just saying. I don't know how they were able to wrap and wrap this show up and make all these seasons. I think it was what, seven or eight seasons? It was a lot of seasons of a show, but we can't wrap this series up. And then we have a whole prequel series, House of Dragon, Dragon of House, hold on, House of Dragon <laughs> that just came out in 2022. I don't understand how all of that happens with a series that's not done yet, but it, there's a huge, huge fandom. And I love listening to people talk about Game of Thrones. I just think people have the most interesting conversations around the series. I still want to read it at some point, but there's just huge fandoms out there. And I, I just think it's really interesting. But 
those are just the, the one-offs that I just wanted to mention. So I just kind of wanted to go ahead and just kind of talk about why we don't have, you know, people lining up at bookstores anymore and lining up on release day anymore for these, you know, new releases like we did with like Harry Potter. That was like the excitement with Harry Potter. On release day, you would hurry up to the bookstore to get that new book. And we just don't see that anymore. I think a lot of that has to do with like people, you know, reading these ebooks. You know, ebooks have been around since I think like the internet was created. But then, you know, you have the introduction of Kindle. And when Kindle came out, all these other companies, you know, started to follow suit. And it's just more convenient to have the Kindles. And then, you know, we have pre orders. I, I pre order a lot of stuff. You know, I fall victim to that. And, you know, we, we're pushed to do pre-orders because that helps out authors and um, that helps them out with their first day sales. And then that's also a convenience thing. You know, it's so easy to go online, do your pre-orders. The stuff is shipped right to your house. And that's not even with pre-orders. That's just with ordering anything these days. You can just go online, click a button, and the stuff comes right to your house. Everything is convenient. And then, you know, we have audiobooks. There's apps, lots of apps you can choose from. Again, it's convenient. You don't have to have a physical book anymore. You don't have to have all this stuff in your house. You just have your phone, something to listen to. You don't even have to have headphones anymore. Just listen to, listen to it from you know your speaker. So it's just, we don't have to actually leave our house anymore to go to the bookstore, which is so sad. I, Like I said, I fall victim to that myself, but if we just didn't have all of these options, we could all go to the bookstore and see each other and smile at each other and talk and have these conversations with each other about the books that we love. Even going to the movies is different these days, you know? Um, I mentioned this before when I was talking about Harry Potter and seeing people at the midnight showings. We don't even have, I don't think, as many midnight showings like we used to. I don't even see those advertised anymore. I don't see people talking about going to midnight showings. I can't even tell you the last time I went to a midnight showing. Matter of fact, I'm I'm old. I probably wouldn't even make it through a midnight showing, especially with how long these uh, movies are these days. I wouldn't make it in a like two hour and a half almost three hour movie trying to stay awake but that's neither here nor there <laughs> so we don't even see those advertisements anymore let alone movies are just way more expensive than they used to be back in the day we also you know have assigned seatings now I don't know if every single movie theater is the same but I know a lot of the movie theaters where I am right now you can just go online and purchase your tickets. It assigns you a seat. So you don't have to get there early. You don't have to stand in line. You know that you're going to have a seat. And the theaters are, you still have some of those theaters that are, are really big, but they're still not as big as they used to be because a lot of them, again, I don't know if all theaters are the same, but a lot of them have those reclining seats so the the chairs are a little bit bigger so now you can't fit as many people in there and so they're a little bit smaller but you don't have to you know stand in line anymore at the theater so you still don't have to be as social and get to know your neighbors and talk about stuff anymore you get there right when the movie starts or a little bit after the movie starts and miss the previews and know that your seat is going to be there you don't really have to go to the movies like you used to back in the day you know there's other ways to watch movies and I think COVID played a lot in that um with them instead of you know having the movies in theater they just put them on streaming streaming services like Paramount Plus or um HBO Max and all of that so or you know Disney Plus and all that so, you know, you don't have to get there on opening day. You know, well, they're only going to have it in the theaters for a couple of a couple of weeks. So after that, they're just going to throw it on one of these streaming services. So I don't have to be there. I don't have to waste my money. I can just wait till it comes out on one of these streaming services. So it's not the same. Yes, you know, they still have all of these big movies out there that you can go see like you know the marvel movies and all of that but going to the movies 
just is not the same. And it's just sad. I used to be somebody that went to the movies every single weekend. And now I'd probably go to the movies once every couple of months. It just, it's not the same. <laughs> Stuff is just not the same. Shopping for books isn't the same. Going to the movies isn't the same. The fandoms aren't the same. Everything is just so... I don't even know the word. Everything is just so secluded and by yourself or not socializing, you know, like we used to. And it's just sad. And, you know, I'm just going to end this by saying, I just wonder if we're ever going to have another like Harry Potter moment. Am I ever going to get, get that moment where I'm rushing out to get this new release at a bookstore and I'm you know, interacting with people at a bookstore. Because the sad thing is, I don't see people lined up at Barnes and Nobles anymore or wherever your big book retailer is anymore. The only time I see people lined up at Barnes and Nobles anymore is what, Black Friday or the holiday or their buy one, get one free hardback sale. <laughs> That's the only time I see people lined up at Barnes and Noble. And I, it's sad. <laughs> It's sad. And I just want my Harry Potter moment again. I just want to be excited to talk to people about this one book. And then for us to all go to the movies to talk to then talk about the adaptation together. I know that there are other, you know, book to movie adaptations that we could talk about. But I, I, I really wanted to just focus on, you know, the series and Harry Potter was just one of them. But I really just want like this moment. And if you've experienced Harry Potter, I think you know what I'm talking about. And I think that this, you know, makes sense to you. But I just wonder if we will ever experience something like that again or if that was the moment. I don't know. Those are my thoughts. You guys let me know down in the comments if you feel the same way that I do. Were you a part of any of these fandoms? Were there any fandoms that you were a part of that I did not mention? Or if none of this even matters, let me know. But that is all that I have for you guys and I will see you guys next time. Bye!